Never fear, the Greek is here. Brian's speech is coming up, so stay tuned. Now, we're gonna take you to Suffolk's blockchain. Now, the subject for now is the ground floor opportunity with that. So, I'm gonna introduce you right now to our speaker. He's a CEO, his name is Brian Legend, and he's been involved in blockchain for eight years and is seen as an influential person within the cryptocurrency space. He has founded numerous businesses and his focus has always been building a trusted brand image in all his companies. He has been named as a tech leader with the likes of Elon Musk and A.V. Benazra. Brian Legend is a successful entrepreneur and is currently the founder and CEO of Sappho Protocol, a DeFi protocol which utilizes blockchain technology through the automatic distribution of set interest payments using cryptocurrency. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, let's welcome Brian Legend. What an intro that was, eh? Wow. Guys, welcome to Say Through X. Thank you very much. So today, we're definitely going to go through and talk about the world's first auto rebasing, auto compounding and auto staking blockchain layer one blockchain now what does all this mean it means that we are the world's first doing this there is no other layer one blockchain or any blockchain utilizing the technology that we're using so i'm going to about this now you're going to see this huge apy right now and you're going to be like what <laughs> what on earth is a hundred and ninety one thousand eight hundred and eighty eight percent APY. Now, for those that do not know what APY is, it's annual percentage yield. This is the amount of APY that you can actually get and earn from Safu X per year. Now, I know what you're thinking, it's absolutely crazy, it can't be done, but these are the slides to show you exactly how. Now, the introductory rate is for the first eight months. So the first eight months, this is fixed. This cannot change, this is promised, this is guaranteed from a blockchain level. So it does work and it is payable. So we'll go to the next slide. So what is rebasing? So for those that are unaware of what rebasing actually is, it's a change, so either an inflation of token supply or a deflation of token supply. It's a change in token or coin supply. So we use this technology in terms of paying out rewards to all holders that hold, say, through X coin, and that's through rebasing. So basically, it's kind of like an inflationary mechanism to award these rebases just for holding. Now, the great thing is, is that we don't need your keys. Your keys, your crypto. There's nothing that we need to do to access your account. It's your keys. The only thing that you literally need to do is hold your crypto. That's it. You hold, you earn. So it's auto staking, auto compounding, auto rebasing. Now the APY rewards are every 15 minutes. Again, from a blockchain level. It cannot be adjusted, it cannot be edited. Literally hold your coins every 15 minutes. You will gain the 191,888% APY. Again, guaranteed. And I know that guaranteed word gets chucked around a lot, but it is programmed, guaranteed. So again, eight months. There is a fixed APY, and then after that eight months, that does change to the fixed flex APY mechanism, which we'll explain a little bit further. All right, so 
with rebasing, just to touch on the inflationary mechanism. Because if we're rebasing, which means if we're inflating the supply, well, the common law of tokenomics, mathematics, is supply you know, versus demand, right? So the more supply there is, well, you know, that deflates the demand and therefore the price of the coin, coin token, asset, whatever it is, whether it's stocks, crypto, it doesn't matter. The more supply, the less that that actual asset is worth. So we have to solve that through a mechanism. And what we have as a proprietary mechanism is not only do we have a maximum supply that cannot be changed, we've introduced something called the fire pit. Now the fire pit, you can think of this as a general kind of burn address where it's common practice, you know, tokens are burned, coins are burned, takes it out of supply. But the one thing that our fire pit does different is it auto compounds itself. So you can think of the fire pit as, I suppose, the biggest coin holder, the biggest whale that holds supply that cannot and will not ever sell. And the fire pit, the bigger that it grows, then the bigger that this deflation will happen, okay? And the more, again, demand, less supply, and the more that coin will be worth. So what our aim is, is that we want to kickstart this fire pit. And again, the fire pit is total supply. Okay, it's not just circulating supply, it's the whole total supply that will take around about three to four years to literally rebase to that total supply. But we want to kickstart this fire pit at at least, and what we promise is at least 51% as a minimum requirement. Minimum. Now, our projections can be going a lot higher than that, up to about 90 odd 6% to start off with, but 51% is what we're guaranteeing. So that means on supply, if 51% out of the 100% is already taken out of supply, doesn't that actually mean that instead of it being an inflationary coin, that it's actually automatically deflationary? So as again, deflationary, as long as we can bootstrap that 51% from the get-go, and then through volume generation, the more volume that our chain produces, so again, the more dApps, the more smart contracts, the more our ecosystem grows and thrives, all that volume that we're collecting, we're actually giving back to coin holders through that flex type of API. Now, a portion, a percentage, 5% of all that volume gets eaten up in that pipe. Now, that's every second, 5%, 5%, 5%. So 5% gets added to the fire pit. So if it starts at 51%, and depending on the amount of volume, you know, we, that fire pit can go to 52, 53, 54, very, very quickly. So once that gets to 90%, 98, 99, it can never get to 100, but it can get to 99.99. Once that gets to that stage, there's gonna be so less of supply available that it can only mean one thing, that the coin value has to go up. It has to. That's just how it works. So the fire pit is how we solve inflation. Yes, we're inflating the coin to give you back rewards, but at the same time, we're burning the total majority of all those tokens out there. Not in your wallet, we're not burning in your wallet, but we're burning from the transactions produced on the chain. So our aim is to try to get this fire pit as big and as grunt, grunly as we can get it from day one. And we will solve inflation and prove out this rebasing mechanism to work 110%, okay? So we'll go to the next slide. We just talked about the fire pit. Again, it offsets inflation and creates deflation and hopefully we go into hyper deflation and hyper deflation is when you, you go over 90%. So it depends from day one where we can start off that fire pit because it will depend on the amount of sacrifices that come in, which we'll speak about. Um, but at least 51% we'll start off with. Again, we spoke about supply and demand. Over 51%, 
that's what we're definitely going to kick the fire pit off with. Again, I want to leave you with a guarantee. It's 51% minimum, but it can be a lot higher. The higher, the better for you, and the more that that coin is actually going to be worth. So, how do we burn and where does all this money kind of come from, right? How do we give out all these dividends, if you will? You can look at it as a dividend. That's what a rebase is. We're giving you a dividend by holding a coin. So, there is a tax structure. Now, yes, I know probably what you're thinking, there's no blockchain that introduces a tax structure. It's absolutely correct. There's no layer one blockchain with a tax structure. Okay, there's gas fees. Yeah, gas fees on our blockchain as well. There's gas fees, of course. We need node operators to validate those transactions. But the tax fee allows us to solve this inflationary problem, to make the fire pit work, to make sure that the supply does not get out of hand and we've proven out this concept for the last seven months. If you're not aware of what Seifu is, Seifu X is the blockchain, it is our blockchain coin, but we have for the last seven months proven out this concept with Seifu, without the X. Now it is just a token, but we needed to prove out the concept. We needed to make sure it worked. We needed to learn from a few things that we didn't do right from the start. And that one main thing, the one main thing is that fire pit. We kick start that five pit at 51% and everything goes according to plan. So 5% again from all transactions, all fees will be given to the fire pit. The more volume the better, right? The quicker that fire pit will just keep on roaring and keep on compounding on itself. So the fire pit can never go down in percentage. If it's 51, it's 51. It can't go to 51 day or go down. It's, it's just impossible because it auto compounds just like every other wallet on the blockchain, it auto rebases and auto compounds. So we've got 1% that will go to what we call the Safer Insurance Fund. So the Safer Insurance Fund is something that we've played around with for the last seven months. It's a way that we can help out the market with liquidity when needed. So if we notice that the coin becomes too volatile, volatility can be good, but at the same time, investors want confidence and they want stability in their coin asset. So that 1% can be utilized in terms of offering liquidity back to the market and stabilizing the price when needed. Again, we've proven out that concept. 2% will go to the Safe Food Treasury. Now that's not uncommon. Obviously any business needs, um, needs, uh, needs funds for expenses, for costs, for outgoings, for overheads, to run the business, to market, to do what we're doing to today to spend money and capture an audience. And that's what we're doing with that 2% of the treasury. All those funds will be utilized to build out our ecosystem, onboard new projects, partner with potential collaborations. You know, we, we, we're gonna be going in. So 2% will also go toward flexible rebase component. Now, I'll talk about this flexible rebase component in a second, because I did touch on the, the fixed flex component. Fixed means that you get a fixed APY that cannot change in terms of rebasing, and the flex basically means that you get a percentage of all that volume that's produced on that chain back to you as a as a holder. So to re to recap, summarise on this: 191,888 percent APY guarantee for eight months. And the best way I'd like to describe this. And I think this is the easiest kind of way to get this across. Is we're all aware of who Uber is. Right? Uber, multi billion dollar company. They raised millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to get going. And all running in debt for like a year or two, at least, just running in debt. And what, what did they spend all this money for? Is to become the biggest and baddest guys out there. They're a multi conglomerate, they can't be overtaken. They're literally got most of the market share, most of, you know, the majority, but they're not going to be overtaken, not anytime soon. So the way I think of this is this introductory API is more of a way of onboarding users and being part of the community, seeing what we're going to be doing, and then using those eight months to then go onto that fixed flex API model that then we can turn around all that volume and give it back to you. So look at it as your kind of early VC investors kind of thing, right? Where you're getting a huge APY, but it's only limited because we want to capture that most amount of attention 
and the biggest market share on purpose, just like Uber has done. That's the easiest way I can put it. So the fixed rebase per year, that's the inflationary rebase we spoke about, is 38%. So that cannot change, that's fixed. Now this only occurs after the eight months. So you get the 191,888 eight months, day one of the ninth month, well, it's gonna turn into the fixed flex APY model. Um, again, it's proprietary for us, but the 38% is the rebase. And then depending on the amount of volume that we get as a chain, that's hard to predict, but if you look at the top five to 10 blockchains out there, and yes, they're already developed. Yes, they've got large communities, but you've got to start from somewhere. And if we look at these hot blockchains that are literally turning over a couple of billion dollars into the tens or hundreds of billions of dollars, especially in the bull market, then you know it's, you wouldn't discount that we could get to that same place. So 3.14% as a reward, which is pi, right, for those math, 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 mathematicians out there, um, will be given to you in rewards as far as that flex. So the flex means, well, if the volume is smaller, well, we can only give out small rewards. But if it's higher and we get into the billions, well, that's capped at 3.14%, which is huge. There's no other blockchain offering that, okay? Some are offering APRs of 20, 30, maybe 40% a year. No one is contending with this. No one's thought of this. No one's had the guts to develop it, nor the manpower and knowledge to be able to develop it. We have for the last seven months, we've proved it. This has taken it to the next level. Blockchain with absolute utility. So maximum achievable fixed flex percentage is 3.24. So if you take the 38% of the fixed and you divide it over the year, that's where we're getting the 0.1% uh, difference from, is through that component. So the building features. Any successful blockchain, or really any blockchain, that wants to contend with the likes of Ethereum, the likes of Binance, Algorand, AVAX, whatever it is. You know, we obviously need utility. And that utility comes in the forms of not only all the projects onboarding and utilizing our service, but it also means that we need to have a safe for X breach as well. We need to offer easy, absolute, effortless way of other chains other coins or other chains being able to come over to a safer base. It needs to be easy on board. Now, we are an EVM compatible blockchain. So that makes it simple right from there. You know, any MetaMask wallet, well, easy EVM compatible, right? But the bridge will allow us to bridge over any Binance smart chain tokens, as well as we've got the view to also do the same with Ethereum based tokens there as well, um, onto our chain. Very, very easy onboarding. So yes, we'll have our own bridge. We've got SafeWorks scan. Obviously, it's just a, a normal transaction scan, like BSE scan or Ether scan. That's all it is. It's just on-chain transactions that you can view, look at your wallet, make sure everything's happening. It's all obviously plain view, and that's what it is. You obviously know what a scan is. We've got our own SafeWorks decks that we're also building. So the SafeWorks decks, will be absolutely a game changer as well. The fees for our decks are the world's cheapest fees as well. If you compare it to the likes of PancakeSwap, if you compare it to the likes of um, this, what is it, Binance, Binance Swap. So you've got the lowest fees on our decks as well that we obviously need, you know, a bridge will be tied into that, by the way. So obviously the bridge from other tokens, other chains, will be the bridge over to our DEX, where we'll be using a, our own algorithm, which much in the same way as an ERC20 or a BNB20 token works, our SAFER20 token will also work in the same manner. I've already spoken about EVM compatibility. So the bridge we just spoke about, obviously, as I said, save for 20 to BME 20 tokens, and in the future, we will look at doing Ethereum-based tokens there as well. The Block Explorer, save for X scan. We've got our save for X decks. Right now, we have gone with the name branding of Waffle Swap as a bit of a kick to the teeth of PancakeSwap, because 
who, who doesn't like waffles better than Dane Cakes, right? That's the thinking behind it. Um, so again, the fees are the lowest in the industry right now. You've got 0.14% return to the liquidity pool, and you've got only 0.05 sent to the Treasury as well, which, as you know, the Treasury uses for expenses um, and partnerships and so forth. Um, so the last one thing I want to leave you with before I bring on uh, Nick Caliani to say a few pieces there as well to end this, is we're doing a sacrifice for Seifu X. Now, you can look at this, it's not an ICO, but you can look at it in that kind of framework. That on October the 20th, we'll be running a full 30 day campaign to allow any existing safe through holders, as I mentioned, for the last seven months we've been doing safe through, right? So we want to make sure that those people get rewarded for holding, so we're giving them a fairly large percentage as a bonus for coming on board to swap over, sacrifice over. And not only are we allowing safe holders, but we are opening it up to the larger chains. And the ones, the assets that we'll be offering for sacrifice, so basically you sacrifice your current asset, well, you get in exchange, say to X. So we're offering Bitcoin, we're offering Ethereum, we're offering BNB, we're off offering also stable coins like Tether and USDC um, as well, as well as BUSD, sorry. So basically the main assets. So October the 20th is where it starts. October the 20th is where you want to be at if you want to be on the absolute ground floor, being that you are entitled to a huge, huge bonus of coming on board. So what I'd encourage you to do, I'm pretty sure you have flyers on all of your seats anyway. If you haven't, then head over to the SafeWorks booth that we can give you to it. But there should be a QR code. You literally scan it, hit our website. You can check it out see what I'll be talking about, and then make your decision yourself and to see what you want to do. So at this stage, I'm pretty much finished. I'm going to kick it over to Nick over here, and he's going to go through the Hyperverse and speak a little bit about um, our partnership together and what it all means. So Nick, do you want to come up on board? Today I'm here to tell you about the exciting integration we are doing on the Hyperverse for Seifu X. But first, let me tell you about the Hyperverse. Can we get the slide up here please? Sorry, technical difficulties. that exists in the crypto ecosystem today is that it is amazingly difficult for developers to build applications. Why? Because it requires them to learn brand new programming languages like Solidity, Cadence, Rust, etc. And then they also have to learn brand new programming paradigms. So what the Hyperverse does is solve this problem for developers. What we have done is created the world's first blockchain agnostic, decentralized, on-chain marketplace for smart modules. Not smart contracts, smart modules. The way we've solved this problem is instead of having developers, here we go, so let me just go to my slide here. There we go. So instead of having developers create monolithic smart contracts, what we have them do is build smart modules which are usable just like Lego blocks. So developers can essentially combine these on-chain smart modules to create any kind of dApp they want. But that still leaves you with one problem, right? You still need to know how to code these. We've solved that problem too. What we do is we create a complete JavaScript abstraction layer. That's a lot of jargon. What it means is Web2 developers with their current skills requiring no new blockchain skills can build sophisticated decentralized apps by using these Lego blocks on chain. 
So we've onboarded Ethereum, we've onboarded Flow, and I'm very excited to say that we are onboarding SafeFluX. The integration is already in progress, and we already have a builder kit available for developers. So for all you developers out here, I have some really exciting news. We are excited to announce a DeFi hackathon for $125,000 in prizes. This is huge, guys. So if you're a builder, I want you to think of three words. Next Gen DeFi. If you're just fed up with all these DeFi protocols just being clones of each other, this is your chance to do something new and innovative. You can take the builder kit we've built for SafeUX and come up with whatever DeFi innovation you want to. This is the world's first auto rebasing blockchain. You can come up with new and innovative DeFi concepts that don't exist today and you can win prizes for it. So guess what? At an AMA that Brian and I did, we kind of just teased this a little bit and we already have 175 projects signed up. And we haven't even started the signups. The signups officially begin today. So I want to tell you that this is the hackathon. If you're going to enter any hackathon, this is the one you want to enter. There's huge prizes, and you can create the future of DeFi in the crypto economy. So there's three things I wanted you to do. One, go to safeworks.com, click on hackathon, and register. Two, follow Hyperverse Dow on Twitter. And three, if you have any questions, Hit me up on Twitter, I'm at TechBubble. See you all at the hackathon. Thanks.